starting today's lecture i would like to tell one thing which i forgot to mention in the uh, last session as i already told you superposition theorem is a direct consequence of linearity therefore anything which you find should be a linear quantity here therefore the finding voltage and current is okay but in case somebody asks you can you use superposition theorem to find power for example you have to find the power across a particular resistor so can you find the power due to one voltage source and then you take the other voltage source and calculate the power and add these two well that is going to be a wrong answer because power is not a linear quantity because it is to the power of the square it is v square by r or i square by r therefore please do not use superposition theorem to directly find power find power however however you can find the power by finding the current by superposition theorem you find the current by superposition theorem okay find the current by the superposition theorem then you square it and multiply it by the resistance you get the power value but you cannot do this thing you cannot do power due to the three volt source and then you add power due to the say three ampere source and that will be the power on the three ohm resistor that's not correct for example you have a configuration like this where you have a three volt source some configuration like this all right and you have a two ampere source here all right so and if you have to find the power across this particular resistor all right let's say it's a 10 ohm resistor so you cannot find the power due to the three volt source on this by eliminating this and finding the power due to this by eliminating this and adding those two that is not correct what you can do is you can find this particular current due to this due to this add these two get the total current and that you can multiply by uh, that you can square and uh, multiply the resistance value and find the power all right so don't directly use superposition theorem uh, for finding power because uh, superposition is a concept which is derived out of the linearity uh, criteria all right. this problem which is given to us in future we will be learning source transformation technique in which you can actually convert this into a voltage source in series with a resistance and you can use a conventional mesh analysis to easily solve the problem but in case you don't uh, are you are not comfortable with that then you can use superposition theorem all right so you have to find the value of ix so you how many uh, independent sources are here you're having two independent sources right you are having a two ampere source and you are having a 3.5 volt source that means as per superposition theorem you will have to find two currents all right so one is going to be ix due to two amperes and the next current will be ix due to 3.5 volt now note the directions i am marking both the currents in this particular direction so the value of ix will be ix due to the 2 ampere source plus ix due to the 3.5 volt source acting alone all right okay now uh, i will not be redrawing this circuit because i don't want you also to redraw the circuit continuously all right so now taking the two ampere source first let us take the two ampere source alone so what do you have to do for with the voltage source the voltage source you will have to short it out right you are shorting out the voltage source all right so this voltage becomes zero and because this particular wire is in parallel with this resistance this resistance also goes because it's a short so the entire current which is coming here it will get divided here and it will move through the 15 ohm and it will complete its path through the yellow wire and come back to the source all right so what will be the ix due to the two, two amperes so it's a simple current division uh, rule right because this 5 ohm is out of the question the only resistance is the 15 ohm all right so ix is will be equal to 2 into the resistance in the other path now this is two resistances but they are in series so i can put 10 which is actually 7 plus 3 so 10 is equal to 7 plus 3 all right into the total resistance so it is 10 plus 15 so it is 2 into 10 divided by 25 right amperes now let us take the next case i'll just rub this here now it's a huge rubber yeah i'll just rub this thing here now all right now yeah now the next case is taking the 3.5 volt source 
the 3.5 volt source alone this is all right so what is the current due to the 3.5 volt source all right let us find what is the 3.5 so what you have to do you have to eliminate this particular current source so what i do is that i'll just take this current source off that means i'm making an open circuit here all right so now clearly what will happen is that you will get two currents here so you can either use this current here all right based on this polarity the current positive current will be in this direction and another current will be in this direction all right now look at what is the relation between 15 7 and 3 now if a current comes here it will not flow through the open circuit right it will flow through the 7 and 3 ohms so the current through the 15 ohm the same current is passing through the 7 and 3 ohm which is the definition of a series configuration therefore this total resistance will be 15 plus 10 equal to 25 and therefore based on this polarity the current that we will get actually in this direction will be equal to so let me just put like this let me call this some ix double dash all right so ix double dash will be equal to 3.5 divided by uh, 10 plus 15 which is 25 all right 3.5 divided by 25 but ix dash is in this direction all right it is from right to left we want ix 3.5 which is in the opposite direction therefore the ix 3.5 volt will be equal to minus of ix of double dash this is same this is right because we have a current in this direction which is positive 3 amperes so i have told you that we can put like this minus 3 amperes all right so this will be equal to minus 3.5 divided by 25 and so what i have written for the total current ix total will be equal to ix due to the 2 amperes which is 20 by 25 all right plus ix due to the 3.5 volt which is minus 3.5 by 25 so this will be 20 minus 3.5 divided by 25 which is 16.5 divided by 25 amperes you can solve it and you can get the solution let us move to the next problem now the next problem is also we have asked we've been asked to find the value of ix due to the superposition theorem all right so you are having two sources here so the 10 volt source and the 3 ampere source so again let us put ix equal to ix due to the 10 volt so let me just mark that here so ix due to the 10 volt all right and ix due to the 3 amps all right so both i'm putting in this direction so based on this particular configuration ix will be equal to ix of 10 volt plus ix due to the 3 amperes now let us take the 10 volt source first 10 volt source alone so what i have to do I will have to open circuit this right I have to open circuit the current source so I'll just rub it off and this is like this now as per the definition of superposition theorem you should not touch the dependent sources you should only touch the independent sources right therefore you will not do anything with this particular voltage source that will remain like that in the circuit all right now so what is the value of ix now based on this polarity ix due to the 10 volt source because I am going to put it in the same direction alright I can write it to be equal to let us write a KVL it will be easier because we have been dealing with KVL let us write a KVL KVL around this path KVL around this direction alright now if I put a KVL around that path if I start in this area so I get 2 into IX due to the 3 amperes all right ix due to the 3 amperes plus 1 into ix due to the 3 amperes plus 2 into ix now this ix has been converted in the first experiment as ix of 3 amperes right so this also will be getting converted ix due to the 3 amperes so this is ix due to the 3 amperes minus 10 equal to 0 therefore ix due to the 3 amperes will be equal to 10 divided by 5 which is equal to amps i hope you have understood this question now <coughs> let us take the next one here i'll just make it a little bit better now yeah so this value was equal to let me just see that value yeah it was equal to 3 amperes it became like a motor now yeah let us take the 3 ampere alone so when you take the 3 ampere alone what you have to do you have to short this the voltage source is going to get shorted so the current will take this particular route only now here also now 
Ix will get converted into Ix due to the 3 amperes. Okay, I'm sorry. I just made a small mistake here. Uh, this was Ix due to the 10 volt, right? So this is Ix due to the 10 volt. Sorry, I just marked it like this. Alright, but the answer is going to be correct. Ix due to the 10 volt. Ix due to the 10 volt will be equal to 2 amps. Right, there was a small mistake in the nomenclature, so it's not a big deal. Now, Ix due to the 3 ampere. Let us see what is the Ix due to the 3 amperes. Now, look at this particular direction which I have put. That is going to be important. Now, 3 amperes is going to come like this and it is going to divide into this area and this area. Alright, so let me call this node voltage as V. Alright, now you can clearly see that I have to use a particular node equation, node analysis here. So, ultimately, it is not required to do this superposition theorem, but just for academic sake, we are doing. If you directly use a node analysis, you are going to get the answer directly. So, anyway, let us uh, put the node equation. So, you will be getting V divided by 2, alright, uh, minus 3 plus V minus 2 into Ix due to the 3 amperes divided by 1 equal to 0, alright. So, <coughs> so I am having one equation with two unknowns, but let us see if we can uh, write this in some sort of proper way so that we will get the answer. Now, what is Ix due to the 3 amperes? In this particular direction, it will be 0 minus V divided by 2 ohms. See, Ix due to the 3 amperes will be equal to, because the direction is from this particular direction, from uh, this side to this side. So, here should be the higher potential, right? So, it will be uh, 0 minus V divided by 2, which is equal to minus V by 2, alright? So, I get 0.5 V minus 3 plus V minus 2 into, what is Ix due to 3 amperes? It is minus 0 0.5 V equal to 0. So, I will be getting here, this will be 1 and this is 1.5 and this is 2.5. So, 2.5 V uh, minus 3 equal to 0 therefore V will be equal to 3 divided by 2.5 alright now if V is 3 divided by 2.5 the current which is going to leave the node the current which is going to leave the node mind you the current which is going to leave that node will be 3 divided by 2.5 divided by that resistance right so into 2 but we do not want the current that is leaving we need the current which is entering because only then this equation is satisfied Therefore, current due to the Ix due to the 3 ampere source will be minus of I, which is equal to minus 3 divided by 5. Alright. Therefore, the total current will be equal to Ix due to the 10 volt 2 minus 3 divided by 5, which is equal to 7 divided by 5 amperes. Alright. So, I hope this answer is clear. The only confusion will be putting the signs, but that you have already done many problems. So, I hope you are comfortable with the passive sign conventions, alright. So, what we have done is that we have found out the value of V and uh, <coughs> the current which is going to leave the node will be equal to, the current which is going to leave the node will be equal to V divided by 2, alright. This is going to be V divided by 2, but you need the current which is entering the node. Therefore, that will be negative of the V divided by 2, alright. So, I think uh, that will be it for this lecture. In the next session, I am going to introduce the concept of source transformation, which is a quite uh, useful tool for engineering circuit analysis. After that, we will start with Thevenin's theorem and then Norton's theorem. And with that, a big area of engineering circuit analysis will be completed and uh, I can happily start transient analysis. So, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Please like, share and subscribe if you want more, if you enjoy all these lectures and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.